what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel so we spent this weekend working on my cousin's car his db1 that you guys see in the storage all the time finally shedding some light on that build and we installed daniel's rebuilt ls bottom end with scat rods and night bomb turbo pistons and the car turned on sounds great and then on sunday we worked on ricky's white db1 he has a b20 swap in it and we did the vtech head conversion now if you guys saw that video we had some issue with some like low misfire uh, eld codes and uh o2 sensor code so what we did was we chopped one of the legs off the obd zero distributor slapped it on and then we threw his stock ecu back in so a non-vtech ecu his car turned on no more check engine lights and the car has no more misfires and it sounds awesome he drove home i'm gonna diag his uh, ecu jumper and his um distributed jumper to kind of figure out if something is kind of messed up in the wiring here so i hope you guys enjoyed that video today we're gonna be working on taiga crv and it's finally time to put his new turbo kit on so we can get this car back in the dyno. What is that? Oh, he took off his nerve bars. Huh. For anybody new to the channel, this is my buddy Tyga's CRV, and this car originally came to him as an automatic front wheel drive. I'll probably put a playlist together for you guys and uh, kind of show you the whole build process of this car since being on the channel. And uh, we pretty much did a VTEC head conversion a five-speed conversion and we threw a turbo kit on it but his first setup let go like probably a month or two ago and uh now we have a sleeved ls block piston rod ls vtec and uh today we're going to upgrade the turbo kit from the ebay 57 trim with a log manifold to a spool and performance mini ram with a gtx 3582r booyah <laughs> oh, just put this on. Sometimes when you're here, this is loose. Going up. Oh, fuck, I doesn't miss the damn bucket. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. You don't do that here. No, mom is... So before I take off the downpipe, I'm going to go underneath here and cut the exhaust because the muffler shop that he took it to didn't have a flange. So it is two and a half right there up in the front and then it goes to three after the flex all the way back, full three inch. The whole exhaust system has to be redone uh, later once the drive shaft gets put into place but for now I'm going to put a flange up there in the front. I did have Tiger buy like... Uh, flex pipe three inch and then three inch three bolt uh, Flanges so we can uh, ease up removal of the downpipe for whatever reason later down the road man This thing is loud boys Where's my safety glasses? Man, this L Ratchet is uh, coming in clutch. Eey. And it's not even mine. Oh, let's go. Eey. This bastard of a hole right here had a Healy coil in it that popped out with the bolt. But you know what? So it's nice to have time circuits 
and I have these in various sizes from mechanicstoolsandbits.com. Get yourself some time cert. Check this out, guys. That precision measurement right there. I had hit this fool up and told him, hey, send me some pictures of your motor to your radiator to your slave cylinder to ensure that when I made this downpipe, it was going to clear. And we have like maybe half an inch. And if you look way down there between the downpipe and the block, that clears too. Here we have the downpipe and uh it's at a weird angle because the exhaust side is on the passenger side so what i gotta do is i gotta get this to the exhaust over there and uh keeping in mind that the transfer case is right here so i have this like i don't know that's a 45 maybe 45 and then i have a longer one of it right here and i didn't want to cut this until I know I got all my bends to make this happen, but just as a reference, I do want to keep the flex tucked up pretty high um, after the oil pan, before the transfer case, so somewhere right here. And this is like that 45 that I need, right? But it's too short to put it where I wanted to go. Or I thought it was short. I think I figured it out. So here I just decided, you know what, I want to add that 2 inch uh, right here to kick this 40 out towards the driver's side a little bit. And with the flex pipe in place, I'm sorry it's dark, but we have a good finger gap between the transfer case. Uh, no interference whatsoever, right? And then this is not a 45 bend. I just cut the 45 in half and uh that pointed this part right here off the flex towards the back to the exhaust with the two flanges attached over there and everything is marked accordingly with hyphens and uh dashes and all of that so that way when i take it off i know where everything is going and tack them all into place test fit one more time and fully weld it but that's that's a three inch downpipe for those that don't know let me see that real quick. GT Series Turbo uses a different uh, Dash 10 return flange. It is a lot uh, shorter than the T3, T4 style. And um, let me show you guys here as a reference. So you can see the difference. T3, T4 is on the turbo. GT Series is a lot shorter. So depending on your turbo, when you're building your kit, make sure you get the right one. And uh, Tiger's installing this with the new gasket as well as the feed line. And um, I'm pulling some wires out of this spool because this right here is super cheap from Harbor Freight. 041 stainless steel lock wire. This is like less than 10 bucks, one pound. And there's plenty in here to um, like weld 16 gauge for a very long time. You can see right here, these are my welds with the. Uh, wire from Harbor Freight not too shabby and what I'm doing right now is I'm actually pulling all of these out to restock this guy right here you can see I pulled it nice and straight and uh, got it as straight as I could for when I'm welding and I run out I can just pull out of here instead of you know stopping and then pulling it out of there straightening it out um, typically I do like 15 or 20 keep them there when I run out do some more Got the down pop all nice and tacked into place. Damn. Three inch, huh, pick? Three inch. All right, guys, so I'm gonna test fit this right now. One side of the flange is tacked, the other side is all bolted down. And uh, I just wanna make sure that that's gonna go right into the exhaust that's currently on the car. And if it does, and it bolts up flush up here, we're gonna take all of that out. We're gonna go to Home Depot with the manifold Find the right thread pitch for the flange, get the bolts for that for the turbo so we can permanently mount that. He has the return flange and the uh, feed flange in place. Damn, my boy. That flange is flushed. We got this little bend, that bend, and then straight into the exhaust. Will you look at that? Oh, yeah. The spool and manifold is a, what is it? 
10 by 1.5 we're doing 30 mil with washers and we have the old manifold with us so now we just need lock washers so we can lock these bolts into place There it is, guys. Full three inch downpipe for the CRV. Done. So, got this all fabbed up last night, and I also have the turbo fully bolted to the manifold. It is ready to go. And also, just want to show you guys here the turbo kit that came off of the CRV. This one right here, I fabricated a long time ago. And this is an AC compatible manifold with an AC compatible downpipe. That is going to go into my cousin's DB1 with the uh, scat rod, night bond, uh, turbo piston, short block. And then the one we're putting in Ricky's car is the one that's going to be right here. It is a drag manifold. Same one in Joe's car. Joe's is ceramic coated. And um, he's going to be using this turbo, which is the same as that one on the floor. So Ricky with the B20 VTEC. It's going to be running this guy, my cousin with the uh, LS uh, turbo block. It's going to be running that one. And Tyga's got that whole new setup. So, ready at a time. Have my drill with a triangle bit on it. And uh, it was like too tight to the transmission. But I was able to drill out the spot weld a little bit and use a chisel to kind of chisel away the rest of it. Hopefully that one's a little easier because I have more room to the block to put my drill in there, but we're almost there. I need this to sit nice and tight on here while the bracket is on it as well, right? Nice and snug. And I can align the radiator um, in position, trying to get this to be at the very top with the bracket holding it down. And uh, once everything looks good and fitted in place, we can tack it. So. All I'm doing pretty much here is putting electrical tape on it, make it thicker. Just like that. All right guys, so the half core radiator um, tab for the bracket, it's off center from the full size. And what I'm doing right now is before welding the bracket on, I have the radiator pushed up as high as I can to get this bracket to sit flush, right? And uh, originally it sat over here, but I'm gonna need it to be over here now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill a hole and use a riv nut insert. This right here uh, uses a typical 10 mil bolt from Honda. And I'm gonna drill the hole like big enough to put this insert in. And I'm gonna install this without the actual riv nut tool because I don't have it. And then uh, we'll have our thread hole for the radiator bracket. One step at a time. There it is. So how I'm gonna do this without the rivnut tool is you just need a flat stock uh, with a hole big enough for the uh, 10 mil bolt. And uh, you need at least a decent sized um, 10 mil. Mine is about inch and a quarter long and uh bracket goes in the middle 10 insert drive it in make it flush and then all you got to do is put the insert into the hole and drive the 10 mil bolt it'll pull the insert and compresses it and uh, make it stuck onto the radio support Just like that. Ready to break it. Oof. Oof. 
that's out of the way. Let's get that turbo on, boys. I think, I think, I think we are ready to permanently bolt this turbo setup into place. Guys, we have the driver's side charge pipe all welded up. I haven't welded aluminum in a long time and not too shabby. Got this all, you know, fitted in place, marked up, tacked up, double check fitment and fully welded. Let me show you guys how this goes on. Um, where's my light at? So this guy goes to the coupler to the intercooler. We are dual back door setup. And then this goes into the turbo. It has to go all the way down. Turbo has to come up after that so we can squeeze this further down, right? A little bit more there. There we go. Then this guy over here, booyah. We are getting really close to finishing the CRV, and I'm kind of curious to see how it sounds. Hopefully, my cousin will slide here tomorrow, let him drive the car around with the laptop, double check AFR because uh, this turbo is going to draw a lot more air. Damn, guys, I kind of been at this for a minute. I was kind of like trying to figure out where I wanted the max solenoid, but I ended up putting it right here. I welded a small little plate to the support and uh this is zip tied into place because i don't have small enough bolts to go through into the bracket but we have the uh, vacuum in from the turbo and then this right here would be bottom vacuum line which goes to the bottom of the wastegate and then top goes to top thank you to danny uh he hooked it up with this uh gold reflective tape because this is really close to the uh, manifold um it's going to sit somewhere like this but at least one to reflect some heat off of it so i'm going to zip tie this guy this guy i just got the downpipe reinstalled i did weld on the bung for the o2 eight and a half inches from the turbo and kind of where the old one was sitting at right there and uh I still haven't welded the exhaust yet, but the last thing I need to do as of right now is put the fan on the radiator. This is a Go Auto Works radiator right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Go Auto Works. Greg at Go Auto Works, I believe, is from Alabama. And he has a lot of like quality stuff. I bought stuff from him before. But fan on here, hook it back up, secure it in place, secure the hoses, and that's <laughs> that's pretty much it so that and then the bumper of course
cruising. We are running a bit rich, so I'm just gonna pull some fuel out of cruising. About 60, 65, 70, we're running at a 13, eight-ish. I wanted to get it back down to a 14, eight. So I'm just gonna pull some fuel out of there and see what it does. So we're idling at 1,000 on the, on the gauge, and it does show 1,000 on the Honda, and we're running at a solid 14.8 to 15.0. So the car itself, the motor, injectors, everything is as, as far as fueling goes, didn't change. The only thing that changed was the manifold, the turbo, and the size of the downpipe. So overall, the base map that was already on it was already fairly dialed in. So all we have to do is just touch up a little bit. Um, didn't need to, that much adjustment. Uh, it was running a bit lean at first, so I added some fuel, and then as we were driving, I did have to pull a little bit out. Um, cruising wise, uh, it is running at about a 14.5 to 14.8. Consistent throttle at 75 rpm or 70, 75 mile an hour and I think it's gonna do him good enough just to drive around um, get on the freeway be able to merge I did tune it out on the boost but uh, again we are on a stock map keep and uh, uh, wastegate pressure so it's only at about 6 psi and uh, the motor still being broken in so we're not trying to get too crazy with it just yet and Hopefully for now, uh, for him to drive to work, breaking the motor a little bit more, should be good. And once we 